this video is on the probabilistic method. It's an extremely powerful and elegant proof technique. Often when we want to show the existence of a combinatorial object, we give an algorithm to construct it or to find it. But sometimes we're not able to do that, and that's where the probabilistic method is an extremely powerful technique to show the existence of the object. So first I'm going to overview what the probabilistic method is, and then we're going to do an example on hypergraph. So first, for the probabilistic method, you generate the entire sample space for the combinatorial object of interest. And in doing so, you're putting probability on each object in the sample space. And we don't enumerate this explicitly often, but we know how to actually put the probability on each point in the sample space. So then given these probabilities, if we can show that the probability of the combinatorial object of interest is greater than zero, then we show that it exists. Now this step is very counterintuitive because in our everyday life if someone were to tell us something like there's a non-zero probability that aliens exist, you wouldn't necessarily be convinced of that. However, in this case we're actually putting the probability on the entire sample space and showing that, that this point would, would have a greater than zero probability. Often when we apply the probabilistic method, we don't look at the probability of the event of interest. We look at the complement of the event, and if we can show that that probability is less than 1, when we take the complement, we show that the probability of the combinatorial object of interest is greater than 0. Okay, so now we're going to get to hypergraphs. So a hypergraph is a graph. It has a set of vertices, V, and a set of edges, and the edges are subsets of the vertices. And we say that a hypergraph is k-uniform when each edge has exactly k vertices. So I've drawn a simple graph. And this is the graph that you, we often see in discrete mathematics and graph theory. And it just has four vertices. And I will list out the edges. So the edges here are 1, 2, so this is one set, and 1, 3, 3, 4, and 2, 4. All of the edges have two vertices, and that's why simple graphs are too uniform. So now we want to actually get to our problem of interest. And our problem of, of interest is dealing with valid colorings of graphs. So let's define what that is. A valid coloring of a graph is an assignment of colors the vertices such that each edge of size greater than 1 is not monochromatic. So let me show this on this simple graph. Well, first let's do an invalid coloring. So an invalid coloring would be one that assigned the vertex 1 the color red and the vertex 2 the color red. This is invalid because this edge is monochromatic. We can fix this and we can two color this entire graph. And the way that we can do this is that we can make the, the vertices 1 and 4 both red because they're not connected by an edge. And we can make the ver vertices 2 and 3 blue. So we just showed a valid 2 coloring for this graph. Okay. So now let's consider mk. m of k. And this is the smallest number of edges. in a k-uniform hypergraph. That is not too colorable. OK. We want to show that m of k is greater than or equal to 2k minus 1 
for all k greater than or equal to 2. Now there's one thing I want to mention is that m of k has to be at least 2k minus 1, but it's not saying that it necessarily equals that. And for k greater than 3, it's largely unknown what m of k is. But for the case of 2 uniform, I can show you that m k, m 2, is equal to 3 because a triangle is the smallest graph that is not two colorful. Let me show you. Once I connect two and three, we, can know, we need to introduce another color because this edge two, three is monochromatic. And we can fix this by simply making three green. Okay, so let's get to work on showing this result. And the way that we're going to do this is that we're going to actually consider the complement. So we're going to consider when the number of edges is at most 2k minus 1 and show that a valid 2 coloring exists. Okay, so let's start. So in order to start, what we're going to do is we're going to randomly two-color the graph. And what I mean by that is that we are going to assign each vertex the color red or blue with probability one half independently. Okay. So this is how we are generating our sample space, in this case the random colorings of the hypergraph G. And now we want to consider what is the probability that the coloring is monochromatic. So the first thing is what's the probability that an edge is monochromatic? There are two ways for an edge to be monochromatic. The edge can be all red, or it can be all blue. And the intersection, an edge can't be all red and all blue, so that's not possible. That has probability zero. So in this case, we're applying the union bound, so the probability of a or B equals the probability A plus the probability B. In this case, our union event is the probability that the edge is monochromatic red or monochromatic blue. So now, in order to calculate this, we have to apply independence. Now recall, if events A and B are independent, that means the probability of A and the probability of B equals the product product of the probability of A and the probability of B. So in this case, each vertex, uh, each edge has k vertices, and each vertex will take on the color red or blue with probability one half. So in this case, the probability that an edge is all red is going to be one half raised to the k, because we're taking the, the product of the probability that the verte each vertex in the edge is red. Similarly, for a monochromatic blue edge, it's the probability that a vertex is blue for each of the k ver vertices in the edge, so that's also raised to the k. So when we add these together, we get 2 times 1 half raised to the k, which is just 1 divided by 2 to the k minus 1. So that's the probability that an edge is monochromatic. But now we want to concern ourselves with the probability that any edge is monochromatic. So that means we have to actually consider all the edges. So the probability that 
any edge. Okay. So in this case, we're going to apply the union bound again. And we're going to sum over all of the edges. So we're going to say for every edge in the edge set, the probability of the edge mono being monochromatic. Okay, so now we have the probability of the edge is monochromatic. So we're implicitly implying, uh, using applying the union bound here. But in this case, we don't have equality. We have uh, inequality because the edges being monochromatic is no, there's actually intersection because some edges can share vertices. So in this case, we can go less than, strictly less than. So now let's look at the probability of an edge being monochromatic. We just solve for that. So we show, show that that's 1 divided by 2 to the k minus 1. And it's the same for every edge here. So let's just multiply this by the total number of edges that we have. Okay. So this is the probability that any edge is monochromatic. Is at most the number, total number of edges divided by 2 to the k minus 1. However, we have assumed so if the number of edges is at most 2 to the k minus 1, this is the complement of m of k being greater than or equal to um, 2 to the k minus 1. This probability is strictly less than 1. So when we plug it in, this is strictly less than 1. So this implies that the probability that there's no monochromatic edges is greater than 0. So if we have no monochromatic edges, that implies that there exists a valid two coloring. And this implies that in order for there not to be a valid two, two coloring, but the number of edges have to be greater than or equal to 2. Okay. 